on Radio 1990. Not 99, 1990. Don't... Hi, I'm Lisa Robinson on Radio 1990, and I'd like to welcome my very special guest, Freddie Mercury. Why haven't you done any interviews in the past few years? Because I hate them. Why? I just hate them. I hate talking to people I, d I don't really know. It's, it's the media, basically, built me up being a real ogre and a tyrant on stage because the way I come across on stage, you know, I'm very volatile, and that's the only part they see of me. I mean, if I don't talk to everybody, so they don't really know the real me. And I don't think anybody will. And um, How does it show <laughs> right itself? <laughs> yes, oh, it I mean, I have itself? tantrums. I mean, you know, if something's not going right, I just I, I throw things. I mean, I, I used to, I could destroy a room in about three seconds. I used to, used to be able to, but I mean, uh, I don't do that anymore. You say destroy a room, you mean like on tour, that kind of oh, trashing oh, of even, a hotel room? Oh, that oh, like, a hotel room. Like also, sometimes sometimes it, it was even in my own uh, apartment, and then it got a bit expensive, and all those <laughs> lalique vases being thrown at You did break a lalique vase, oh, did yeah, you really? Several. Oh, those are thousands <laughs> of dollars. Are you very, very rich? Oh, I'm extremely rich. Do you like being rich? Of course. What do you do with your I money? I flaunt it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with your money? I spend it. You said the mm. rest of the guys have houses in L.A. I assume you mean the other members of Queen. Yeah, who do you think what, I meant? What, what are their names again? <laughs> no, sorry. Stop that shit. <laughs> Brian, May. Um, it's Brian, Roger, and Roger John. Roger and John, yes. I sometimes forget them too. You but know? you don't really hang out with them or anything, do no. you? You know, if I like them, I socialize with them now and again. You know, it depends. But I mean, as a rule, I don't. They have very different... Um, Characters and they like different things. You know, I like to go to ballet and opera and things. They don't. They don't like all that. They just just keep going to rock and roll shows. Why do you think you've managed to stay together, working with them as, at this job in this business for all these many years? Now, what it was formed mm. in 1971. Mm. Why do you think we've lasted this long, money, darling? No, I mean I, that's is that why you've lasted this long, <laughs> or that's why you've stayed well, together for this long? No, I think we kind of um, underneath it all, we kind of like each other, and we like the music we make. That's right. basically it. I mean, I mean if we. Um, if we didn't like the music that we were making, we'd, we'd, we'd you know, we'd say goodbye to each other. Because, I mean, no, there's nothing else left. Though the music is still there, basically, that's basically it. And when you first came together, did you think, were you very different then? How do you mean? Oh, well, yes, we, I, mean, I mean, we were very hungry. You were, we were very, very diverse hungry. personalities then, yes, yes, as yes, well. Yes, but at that time, we were sort of getting to know each other, and we had so much to sort of put across, and we were very hungry for, uh, for, um, for a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, right? Yes, yes, we were just hungry. We just mm. wanted to. We just wanted to let it all out, and um, and so um, you know, we kept. We took it from there. And, be, and the the thing about it is, the four of us sort of write very different songs, and so it's kind of um, it keeps us going. I mean, if everybody wrote the same kind of thing, and and we all appeal to the same kind of people and everything, then it would be a bit boring. I mean, we just have four totally diverse personalities and different egos, and, and that runs right, and that's good. So we still fight. I mean, we still fight like kids. Every time I'm in the same room with Brian, there's, you know, within five minutes we sort of... Sparks fly. Start, yeah, we start. Well, I haven't hit him yet. But there's still <laughs> time. <laughs> I'm just thinking, is that a possibility, really? Well, I bet you'd like to be there. Um, no, no, he, he writes, I mean, especially now, I mean, we've, uh, total extremes. I mean, he's still into the heavy metal type uh, of stuff, which is fine, you know, I've just sort of moved away from it. I'm more into the black kind of thing. I like you know, more the disco, more... I like to try different things every time. And, um, you know, in the early days, we came through the heavy metal thing. And uh, even after about the, the, the second album, I started writing different kind of things. I mean, uh, a heavy metal band doesn't have to, have to just stick to heavy, you know, big heavy merchant chords uh, and things all the time. I mean, you can write. I mean, I'd like to think that I'm just, I'm a songwriter. You've always been very sort of flamboyant and theatrical and concerned with visuals yeah. and stuff with I'm getting shows. a bit sober in my old age. Are you? I think so, yeah. What do you mean, just in terms of the way you dress? No, no, dress has got nothing to do with it. No, in terms on of my, my thinking, in terms of my thinking, no, on stage I still dance around. You know. It's just my thinking, you know, I've become... It's like, I mean, I just can't... Um, I look back at, at myself and think, oh my God, how could I have done that? You know, wearing black nail varnish and, and the long hair and, and, and wearing the makeup and wearing the kind of clothes. But I mean, that's... Everybody grows out of it, you know. I mean, that was when I was about 20, 20 22 years old. I'm now 37. Still looking wonderful. I huh? was just going to say, this looks very good. And I have not there. had a face. You have not like had a thing. temporal. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> I have not. You, um, you also, I remember, you used to be a fan of Liza Minnelli's and very kind of real show busy stuff that, as you said, doesn't really have much to do with rock and roll. I mean, going to the opera and going to the ballet and all that. Yeah, but I mean, I, I use it in my, in my, in my shows. That's the way I mean, it's like, um, 
I think Queen are a theatrical band. You know, I mean, we don't like just going on on stage and just strumming our guitars. And I mean, it's, it's we put on a show. So I mean, I mean, that's the kind of person I am. I mean, it's just um, I'm a trooper, honey. So you don't feel limited by rock and roll, by no, the whole no, genre no. at all. No, I don't think so. I you need don't to want do to go to a Broadway show or do Want to do a Broadway show? Yeah. No, no, no. no. I, I think right uh, one, no. rock and roll um, is, is has a very wide spectrum, and you can do anything you want in it. Look at look well, look at Boy George. I mean, you know, it's as, as theatrical as, as you can get. The songs that you've written, and particularly many of the hits, they've been such a different variety of styles, and your voice also is so different. You know, a crazy little thing called love is such a different. Is that kind of music that you always liked? That particular kind of rockabilly, Elvis sort of thing. <coughs> oh yes, I like that too. I mean, I like I, mean, um, I like all kinds. Surprised. Do you like the, the people? Do get I like surprised? to surprise them? Yeah. Um, I guess that that uh, this element of truth in that. I like to. I just like to do different things. I, I like to. It's like I don't like to stay in one position for for too long. And so that comes out in everything. It comes out in my songs and my lyrics and. Uh, I just like to try everything once, and I'm not scared of the pitfalls and things. And I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about saying, "My God, this is not my scene," and if, if uh, it's going to be. I mean, in fact, I love, I love the challenge. I sort of, you know, I, t I love the challenge, and um, I like doing things that are that are not part of the mainstream for me. And uh, sometimes, if that works, it works in a very uh, big way. Otherwise, it can be a very big flop. But I'm willing to take that risk. And that's why, on something like Hot Space, we went off on a limb. And I said, let's just do some of this black stuff that I liked. And I sort of forced the other three to do it. You know, they hate me for it now because it didn't sell that much. I hate this thing about um, people thinking, oh, well, we've, we've heard a Queen album. Uh, let's go and see this, um, uh, their stations and see if it sounds the same. I mean, I, I think by now, people who come to see our shows know that it's not going to be exactly the same. We don't want it to be. How boring if, if, if we reproduce note for note what was on the album. They might as well sit at home and listen to the album with a few visuals thrown in. I mean, I'd like them to come and see that it's, it's a show, it's a, entertainment, and our songs take on a different meaning when, when we um, uh, do a stage show. So, I mean, what they hear on, on record can be totally different to what they hear on stage. I mean, we deliberately do that. And some, I mean, like that, because some of the songs have that, mu that depth, I think, that where we can, we can do it on, on an album. And when we do it on a show, we can totally twist it around and, and w we do what is best for the show. A song like um, Love of My Life, which is a, a song from Night of the Opera. I mean, it, it, it's very classical and very, it's got lots of musical instruments um, on it, on, on the album. And when we do it on stage, it's just m me and Brian. I mean, Brian just, plays an acoustic uh, guitar and I just sing it and it's, it's, it's a, a very good song for rapport. I mean, I like to, to, to get uh, the audience participating with me and, and, and most of the time I let them sing the song because they're into that. So, I mean, I basically conduct that song and I love the fact that they just sing it. So, it's totally different from what they, what they hear on an album. Are there places in the world that you want to go to that you haven't been? Yes, I'd like to go to Russia. I'd like to go to Russia and China. That, that sort of... I think they'll let you in. Thing. I don't... Well, at the moment, I don't think so. Russia already turned us down because they think we're too um, volatile. You know? Why? And Elton they think is no problem, right? No, well, he's sort of... One he's person right. he's, he's, he's in the middle, piano. In the kind of middle of the road. He's okay. I think when they show our... When uh, the Russians saw our videos and, and the way we come across, they thought we were a bit too volatile and they thought we were going to corrupt their youth. Incite them. Mm. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and probably you would. Well, yeah. that's my that's my job. What happened with David Bowie yeah. with pressure? Nothing. We just went into the studio, did did the song, and out it came. It was no big. Uh, no, but I mean, <clears throat> wasn't there this whole drama about him taking his name off of it or wanting to not be? No, that was that was um, that was something else. He did sort of like backing vocals on one of my uh, songs that was on the album. Then that's that's not under pressure. That's another one. Right. And um, when it came to being released, I mean, he didn't like he didn't like what he did. That was like. You know, asshole tells me right at uh, right at the tail end when the thing is just about to come out. So anyway, as, as you know, artistic license. He just didn't like his voice right right when it was about to come out. Mm. And I said, fine. I said, it's quite easy. All I do is erase his um, vocal, and then and, and out it came. It wasn't like he he didn't do a very in depth vocal at all. It was just a background. It was just background vocals. So, I mean, he just didn't. Do you think like it was it, petty? I mean, do you think it was unnecessary? Whatever, whatever. I think it was unnecessary, but I mean... Are you um, not speaking to each other? Anymore? Always speaking. It's just we're in different parts of the world, and... Uh, no, I'm not one of those bitchy queens that you like to... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's just... Um, no, he's all right. He's okay. He's How did you happen like to work with him in the first place? Well, I mean, we, we were friends from a long time back, and... Um, 
and uh, we were in Montreux in, in Switzerland. We own a studio there, so we were working on it, and he lives there. He just happened to be there, and uh, he kept coming to the studio, listening to our tracks, and we were jamming to, to some of his old songs and things. And then one day we were having, <coughs> one night we were having dinner, and after that we were going back into the studio to, to carry on with the session. And, and it just happened. He just said, oh, why don't we just fool around and, and, and get something started and see what happens? And, you know, we started playing on the piano, and the rest of the band were there, and we started uh, putting something down, and under pressure started to build. <laughs> To get together with Michael Jackson and work with Well, it was just um, in, in the early days, well, I mean, like three, four years ago, I mean, he used to just come and see our shows at, at the Forum in L.A. And um, I guess he, he liked us, and so um, I got to meet him, and um, he kept coming to, to see us, and then we started talking, and uh, in those days, I think he would actually go out. He'd go out and, and have dinner or something. I remember going to dinner with him, and I think now he just stays at home and doesn't like coming out at all. That's what, you know, that's what he says, I mean, he's just, um, he says, or oh, whatever he wants, he can get at home, because, I mean, a, 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 any, anything he wants, he just buys it. But have you and, ever uh, talked, have you talked to him about, I mean, just in terms of being an artist, or in terms of a song? Well, I mean, I, I, like, to stay in the house like that, that kind of isolation, that's so scary, I know, that's not me, it? that's not me, but I mean, you know, or, that's his bag, mm. and, um, I wouldn't do that, I mean, I'm, I'll be bored to death, I mean, I have to go out, I have to go out every night, I mean, I hate staying in one room for too long anyway, I'd just like to, Keep, keep moving. It was just, just an individual approach, you know. He, I don't know. I mean, I guess he's just um, because he started when he was very young. So, I mean, when you think about it, well, when I'm talking to him, I think, my God, he's 25, I'm 37, yet he's been in the business almost longer than I have because he started that young. And for me, it's sort of quite frightening when I'm talking to somebody who's 25 and, he, and uh, you think of somebody who was 22 or 25 has just been starting out or whatever, and I could sort of teach him a, a few tricks, but uh, not Michael. <laughs> I think one of the tracks would have been on uh, the Thriller album if I'd finished it, but um, I missed out. No, 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 nobody knows that. If there was a book of rules, everybody would buy it, and then everybody would be churning out the same old trash. Do you think people steal from each other in rock and roll a lot? All the time. Do you? All the time, yeah. But uh, you, there is stealing, and there's you know, robbing, and there's, there's sort of acts of murdering. So, I mean, it just depends. I mean, yeah, everybody steals. And sometimes you steal without even thinking it, you know. That can be good. I mean, it's just... Uh, I mean, I don't sit down and look, uh, listen to everybody and say, okay, I'm going to snatch that phrase or whatever. I mean, I can get influenced. Like Aretha Franklin's um, like phrasing is just wonderful. I wish I could sing like her. You know, her phrasing is just so beautiful. I mean, it's so effortless. And it's just, she just sings like a dream. It's just like, I mean, she doesn't have to think about it. I mean, when I have to sing, I think about it. I think, okay, I have to sort of, and I sort of practice a few phrases and then do it. Whereas I, I, I can tell by just listening to Aretha Franklin's records that, I mean, she just goes in there and then just, it's effortless. Having said that, I'm sure she would call me up and say, <laughs> wait a minute, I, I go in there and do... No, but it just sounds so effortless, and it's all sort of spontaneous phrasing and things, which is what I love, and uh, I sometimes try to do that on, on... It's like a song called Somebody to Love, and that was the gospel element, and when Aretha was doing all the gospel stuff, I just loved that, you know, the big, big, humongous choir behind her, all sort of like, like tidal waves behind her singing, you know. That's, that's what I like, and that's, that's one element of Queen, because, I mean, the multi-tracking harmonies and all that, you know, there's various ways of doing harmonies, and um, the gospel side of harmonies is just stupendous. How long did it take you to get to the point where you could manage your own business affairs? I mean, you have gone through a few managerial changes and problems. Yes, well, that's, problems. that's how long it takes. I mean, I, I don't think anybody can manage straight away unless they're very lucky and unless they know. You've got to know the business, and the only way you, know, you get to know the business is to, 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 to make mistakes and have pitfalls, and, and, and uh, I think every major successful artist has gone through that. I refuse to believe that somebody's just had no problems at all and just uh, managed to do it like that. I think, I think that's all part of a history, all part of a, uh, a band's history. They have to go through all that. You know, they will get, you know, there are a lot of sharks around and you get done in, you know, people rob you blind, money, but that's all part of it. And then you learn by your mistakes and then you know which people not to employ and, and, and where you think, okay, you just have to uh, take uh, control of, of this situation yourself. And um, that's what we did. I mean, after a while, I mean, the managers were good, they were bad, they were good, or whatever. It just happened, there, was, there came a point in time where we thought, um, we can do this ourselves. Okay, it's a, a bit more work, but I mean, um, we've gained the experience and we can do it ourselves. Besides, we make more money anyway. You don't have to give a percentage to your manager. Is there one so, person uh, in the group, do you do more of it than anybody else? No, no, I think we all do. We all, uh, as far as that side is concerned, we all, um, partake in that 
individually. It's like um, 25%, to be honest, all four of us. Because we all come, we all do different things. Like John's very, very good at um, the, uh, the actual <coughs> business sense, the actual sort of money side of it, the marketing and everything. So we leave that to him and um, they'll leave me to just the wardrobe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the wardrobe. They'll leave me to the wardrobe doing, uh, and writing the hits. <laughs> now, what happens when one of them writes a song that if I don't like it, do you it, like the lyrics? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say, yes, the song's good, if it's not good. They, they come and have... tell you that Of course, well. of course yeah. they do. And I tell them to fuck off. <laughs>